We're on the road to Santiago. We're on the road to find ourselves. <laughs> a little park up here behind the Portomarin letters with the old church, the Peregrino who points the way. There's where the bus picks you up. We're driving through Opadruza now. Look, there's the rooster. We have arrived at the Santiago bus station, Santiago de Compostela bus station. Just figuring a way out. So as you can see, we're at the Estación de Autobuses. And now we're going up an escalator. You can't really see through the slats, but that's the train station again. We're walking above it now towards the city. There's the train station now that we're down here, Santiago de Compostela. Gotta go to this step. So we're not going there today, we're going there early tomorrow. We are walking to the bus station, actually the train station, gonna catch a train. My hotel was back that way, but right down this street was the hotel where I stayed in 2018. I didn't go to the cathedral. I didn't go to the office to get my Compostela. I just went straight to that hotel. This has been a weird visit. Unlike 2018, I find there's been a lot of misery on this one. Well, like 2018, there's been a lot of misery. I guess I should say that. But unlike 2018, I am finding ways to put that misery to good use. waiting for our train which will take us to Leon. Uh, I wanted to go to Madrid today but the hotel where I'm staying could not extend me for one more day. They didn't have availability tonight and then finally I said why don't I just why don't I just go to a city that can get me out uh, get me into Madrid by midday tomorrow and I looked at different cities that had buses uh, the Alsa bus Finally, I said, oh, Leon. Leon can get me out at 8.30 and get me into uh, Madrid Airport by noon or 1 o'clock. So now I just got to get from uh, Santiago to Leon. You know what? This is all bullshit. I'm just going to explain it to you at uh, later. <laughs> Main streets of uh, Leon. Walking to the albergue, which happens to be the same albergue I stayed in last time. Only reason I'm staying in albergue this time is because I want to save some money. I uh, paid a little more for a hotel in Madrid. I can't get across here. I thought I had an opening. But the non Camino y part of the Camino crossing the street and annoying the locals. The street up here. Uh, where there is a roundabout is the Camino coming into Leon. The old part of the city is off that way. My albergue is that way. Weird day skirting with a little bit of depression, but awareness of it and ready to use my tools to deal with it. Once again, we are at check-in Leon. And it's strange because right over there is the check-in, right over there. Yeah, you can't even see. God, I got a good look at my beard. Get a good last look. And I had no idea that a major supermarket was right over here behind this KFC. We're over here, that's a Carrefour. I don't know if you can see me on the Sprinter side. Carrefour is a major European uh, market chain. 
In Antibes, France, they have a car for city that I shopped at a lot, which is kind of like the Walmart back home. Out of Camino mode and in comfort mode. So we're gonna see what we can find over here. Got a Burger King if I wanna get this hamburger. Got the car for over here. Remember Brody and Mallrats? I love the smell of commerce in the morning. I'm not sure I'm gonna go to the old town. I'm not sure I'm gonna go look at the cathedral. It's like this. When you're walking the Camino, that stuff is special and it's amazing because there's a sort of symbiotic relationship with it. It's part of your journey and it becomes a part of you. When your Camino is fractured and scattered and... Right. When your Camino is fractured and scattered... People, what the fuck? <laughs> I don't know. I've got to do some thinking tonight. <laughs> so I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, why am I... <coughs> Going to Madrid, I'm anxious to explore Madrid. Another adventure. Always a little creepy walking around a city in the early morning hours. Our walk takes us past Leon Arena. That's actually a stadium for bullfighting. Over here is our stadium for uh, football. Here we are crossing the street at the Palacio Municipal de Deportes. Interesting. Looks dead. Hola. I have to say it was kind of odd staying in that albergue last night. Everybody in there was within the flow towards Santiago. They were all peregrinos. Who knows where they had started, but, you know, here in Leon, the end of the, uh, of La Maceda, kind of a special place. They're all in the flow, exhausted. They're all moving this way. Me, I'm moving in an entirely different direction. I arrived on a train, stayed the night, now I'm leaving on a bus. It's weird, I just got to be an observer. I just sat in my bunk and uh, it was sort of like my little isolated fortress of solitude. Anyway, here is what I have learned this time on the Camino. I realized that I come in here, I came in here making it a bit about ego. I mean, and that's that's normal, we all make it about ego here on the Camino. Every last one of us. Not one single human being has the capacity to be 100% altruistic. No one comes out, out here to serve. They come out here for a specific experience. It's about ego. And ego can be everything. Ego is, I desire a certain experience. I desire a certain connection. I desire this. I desire to learn something. I desire enlightenment. But it's always I, 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 I. And last night, going to bed, I listened to a podcast interview with Shia LaBeouf talking about his uh, alcoholism and sobriety. And it just made perfect sense about getting sober is about stripping away the ego. And no, we don't become purely uh, altruistic people relieved of the bondage of self, void of ego. It's, a, it's really about a constant battle. And when I'm walking the Camino engaged in ego, I'm miserable. Just like Shanti Diva says, the man who seeks his own happiness forever suffers. When I have those rare little pockets of serenity where someone needs me and I can just show up for them, then I step out of ego for just a second. And then I feel real joy. And the interesting thing about the Camino is I think all of us come here for ego, but when we get into the flow of the Camino, <coughs> excuse me, morning cop, when we get in the flow of the Camino, we find that real joy. So 
So this is my neighborhood for the next two nights. Up there is my hostel. A little quiet neighborhood. So the park's over there. We're gonna go do a little sightseeing today before we go to bed. We're heading over to the stadium. I know this place. One thing I hope to find tomorrow is a Madrid neighborhood, if that makes sense. We're at the stadium. A lot of uh, construction going on. So. Crazy how good this team is. Best club of the 20th century FIFA trophy. They are playing uh, Mason Dormo over the speaker. You know my history with that. <laughs> Always a good sign. Seems uh, Madrid has a pretty damn good basketball team, too. All right, now this is really cool. Probably can't see my beautiful face, but it's a hologram. Wow. Can you imagine? First decent night's sleep I've had in a while and the caterpillars are gone. <laughs> so this is my little neighborhood where I'm staying at. Got a little fruit stand here and a little pizza place there. I haven't eaten there yet. We're walking up to the metro station. Huh. Okay. Now we're in Madrid. Wow. So we are walking along the Grand Via, Salon El Dorado, or as we say it back in Kansas, uh, El Dorado. <laughs> El Dorado was the town where I was raised in Kansas, that's how we pronounce it. Also, I think Obama's grandfather was born there. Not looking too pretty here right now. <laughs> well, I don't know where I am exactly, but this is more like it. Now I feel like I'm in a cool European city. Hello, Mr. Lion. All right, that place is called Grand Via. Wow. And uh, according to the brochure I have, it's a great place for shopping. Feeling a bit like Captain Kirk. Oh, well, this is actually the very expensive place to shop. I was looking at very trendy, high-end fashion place and not exactly the place I want to be shopping. Over there is the palace. So I thought this was a palace. I'm not, uh, I'm not sure what it is. So just chilling in Madrid now. I really don't know much about this city. And Maybe I'll go back up here and try to get in the park over there. What kind of day I just want to sit and have a cold beer and I don't drink. We're gonna go in this park here. I need this. See what it's all about. Where do I put his dinero? Oh, over there, okay. I don't know what this is. Puts money in the thing and... <laughs> We are walking out of Madrid on a very quiet Sunday morning. Those are the machines where you get your car to tour uh, Madrid. You can't really go to Camino cities from the airport on the railway. You can on the bus, which is what we discovered when we came in. Now you can take the Renfe down to Chamartin, and from there, I was able to go to just about anywhere. You can see where the line goes around all the way. It, went much, it goes much further back, disappearing back there. So it took us an hour to go to wait in that line to get our bag checked. It took us half an hour to get through TSA and down here, and we're still not even at our gate. I want to get around these people, but they put their luggage there so you can't pass them. We will now collect any items you wish to discard. We will be landing soon. And we are in Philadelphia. And of course, with customs, you gotta pick up your bag and take it through customs and put it back on the other flight to get you home. Of course, mine's one of the last ones off. Ah, sorry. Man, you should have seen my global entry photograph. I was like, that's <laughs> terrifying. <laughs> Yeah.
Where the fuck did Monday go?